Ooh, 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 see folks. Good morning, guys. This is, I believe, chapter 11 today. Yesterday, we met the lovely Nora, who is the uh, keeper of Mr. Miles, one of his nurses that takes him out and around. Lovely British lady um, who planted flowers in the garden. Today, Maricela is our focus. So let's read, follow along. Let's figure out what her perspective on the garden is. Just a reminder, as always, you following along these readings is totally optional and for your enjoyment, it is not required. So today, Maricela. If you're Mexican, the Cubans and Puerto Ricans hate you because they think you snuck in illegally and they didn't, which they would have if they could have walked. If you're a teenager, the whole world hates you. If you're a pregnant teenager, people think you should be burned at the stake. I'm a Mexican, pregnant, 16-year-old, so shoot me and get it over with. I wouldn't actually care if you did. In a way, I'm already dead. I used to be really, really hot. Because of the baby, I'm as fat as a wrestler. I dropped out, I've been to exactly zero parties, and I've been asked out exactly zero times, including by the scum who got me pregnant. My parents were mad. They wanted me to graduate. But abortion or adoption? Forget it. Then they got sort of excited about it. They both love babies not me. They started praying for it every night while I was begging my body to miscarry. Three of us from my high school got into this program for pregnant teens. They give you rides to the doctor and help with getting your GED at home. Great. Except that Penny, the woman we see, saw the community garden and got the program its own spot to give us practice taking care of something and to let us witness the miracle of life and to try and keep us from eating our babies alive or dropping them into dumpsters. It was already the middle of summer, so she had us plant radishes since they grow fast. All three of us hate radishes. As soon as the little green leaves come up, came up, a gopher or something wiped them out. Hm, so much for the miracle of life. I didn't tell Penny I was hoping the same thing happened to my baby. She's so cheerful, I never could but she's not puking or getting big as a blimp. No wonder she's always smiling. After the radishes came squash, then Swiss chard, which nobody knew how to eat. I was in my seventh month. I hated the bending. We all complained, but Penny just smiled. The rest of us called working there the chain gang. I hated the feel of dirt under my nails. One afternoon, Yolanda broke two of her fancy, painted, expensive nails and cursed out loud for 10 minutes. Penny couldn't shut her up. Then another woman came over and gave us this long lecture about the word decorum. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was my old third grade teacher, Miss Fleck. I prayed she wouldn't recognize me, but naturally she did and asked me all the usual questions. I should have had the answers printed up on a card to hand out. The next week, when some man threw a can out his window, which landed about a foot from my head, Miss Fleck figured out what apartment he was in, walked up, and yelled at him like he was a kid. She treated the whole world like it was her classroom. Different people came to our part of the garden for different reasons. This Puerto Rican kid had these pumpkin plants that we kept getting into ours which gave him an excuse to walk right past me and talk to Dolores, who was 15 and pretty and still didn't look pregnant. I couldn't wait for her to get huge. Sometimes this black guy ran through our garden. He couldn't take time to go around. He grew lettuce or tried to. Most of it was dead. He'd drive up in a cab, slam on the brakes like the Pope just stepped in front of him, run through our squash, cut a bunch of lettuce and run back with it in a bunch of water. Then he'd peel out, leaving lots of rubber. Then there were the people who came by to give us different things. Vegetables that they'd grown and thought we should eat, which we always gave away later. 
advice on growing our stupid Swiss chard, advice on giving birth and raising kids, which I turned out as soon as they started. One day in August, it was just me and Penny. This black woman, Leona, who had a garden and talked to us, came over and gave me some flowers she'd grown. They were yellow. She called them goldenrod and said if I made them into a tea, it would help me with the delivery. She knew I didn't want to be pregnant. I could talk to her about it. That day, it was almost too humid to talk. The windows around the garden were open and you could hear 10 different TVs and radios. A storm was coming. The thunder was getting closer and then it hit, bam. Then all the TVs and radios went off. So did the lights. It was a power failure. It was quiet in the garden without all the noise. So quiet, it was weird. I looked around. An old man near us was slowly picking cucumbers like nothing had happened. Whole city shuts down, but the garden just keeps going, Leona said. She talked on how plants don't run on electricity or clock time, how none of nature did, how nature ran on sunlight and rain and the seasons, and how I was part of that system. The words sort of put me into a daze. My body was part of nature. I was related to bears, to dinosaurs, to plants, to things that were a million years old. It hit me that this system was much older and stronger than the other. She said how it wasn't some disgrace to be part of it. She said it was an honor. I stared at the squash plants. It was a world in there. It seemed like I could actually see the leaves and flowers growing and changing. I was in that weird moment or in that weird days. And for just that minute, I stopped wishing my baby would die. What does the garden do for Mericella? How does it change her perspective and her opinion? And is it the garden or is it somebody else's opinion of the garden? That's it for today. Tomorrow, I'm here. We are getting quite close to the end, my friend. Just a couple more characters to go. I hope that you have enjoyed and continue to enjoy. Stay tuned later today, Fever 1793. Until then, stay safe. Know I miss you and I love you. Mwah.